Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Lights and Perfection. You are here today for Real Gospel for Real People, where we just break down the nitty-gritty of the gospel and present it to you. Let's dive in. Hello once again, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Lights and Perfection for Real Gospel for Real People. My name is Chris, and today I want to talk about something that's really dear to my heart, and that is beauty from ashes, like from ashes to beauty, and the beauty of the gospel and what Jesus Christ has accomplished for us on the cross. The other day, I don't maybe not even the other day, but maybe a couple weeks ago, I did a post on our Lights and Perfection Facebook page with this same image. I only stretched it out for the thumbnail on here. And I wrote this quick devotional. This was back on December 11th. It is so amazing how the Lord can take a life that is broken and beaten by sin and past mistakes and transform it into something of beauty and splendor. To those who are bowed down by the weight of your sin and mistakes, lift your head up to the one who alone can change it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, to get into that, I want to look at Isaiah 61.3 because this is the passage of scripture that this essentially came from. And for that, I'm going to go ahead and jump over here to Bible Hub, my favorite uh, one-stop shop for all things Bible. Um, I would recommend it to anybody who's trying to get deeper in their relationship with God. That is what we're trying to do here on Real Gospel for Real People, is just really simply present the gospel to those that may not really understand it, and to try to spread the knowledge of Jesus Christ and what he alone has accomplished on the cross 2,000 years ago. And this is here um, on this Bible Hub, is a, a uh, parallel, and so I can take one verse and I can read it in several different translations. I encourage people to do that sometimes if you feel like God is speaking to you on a certain level um, that you can kind of like compare and that way you can get it from different perspectives, um, you know, different uh, generations and contexts and things like that. The, the, our English language kind of changes over time. So it's important to understand like the King James, for example, was written way back when people spoke different. And so today we have all sorts of different translations like the NIV, the ESV so on and so forth. It just kind of breaks it down into like modern English, so it's easier to digest. So I always recommend um, checking out these parallels. It's a really easy tool to use at BibleHub.com. Not a sponsor, just trying to, to share what I do. All right, so Isaiah 61.3. I'm going to start here with the New Living Translation. To all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. Praise the Lord. So the context here is really simple. So this was written by Isaiah the prophet, and this was way before Jesus came into, into uh, existence. And, and so Jesus also referenced this, this passage of scripture and made mention of it in Luke 4. We'll go there here in a second. But he said, to all who mourn in Israel. So the context here was about Israel. But the idea was about salvation. And, and he made a, a, a statement in here and said, instead of mourning, joyous blessing. So joyous blessing instead of mourning. And what that means is that, you know, back in the day, you know, the the way to get to God was through sacrifice and and and. and through repentance and sacrifice, offering actual animal sacrifices and things of that nature. It was the blood atonement that appeased for the wrath of God because of people's sins. And so people, when they felt like God was distant from them, they could see in their nation, in their cities, in their dwellings, that things just weren't going the way they were supposed to be going. And so through brokenness, they they put on sackcloth and ashes. It was a sign of repentance and humility that they were humbling themselves and recognizing their sin before God. They would throw ashes on their head. They would rip their clothes. And so what Isaiah is saying here is that to all who mourn in Israel, who mourn over their sin, over their past mistakes, much like I shared in that Facebook post that we put on our official Facebook page. And so he said he will give a joyous blessing instead of mourning. 
This is something that most people fail to realize about the gospel. When presented with the gospel, people say, yeah, but I would rather have all this stuff in my life than have to do things differently. But what's so beautiful about what Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross in salvation and understanding what repentance really does, repentance brings refreshment into one's life. Reason being is because we were all created in the image of God, but in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve fell from grace because they sinned and disobeyed God and were thrust into their own consequences, thereby enduring punishment for the remainder of what we even um, have in our experience today. We're all from Adam, and so the point being is that we were all born into sin. And so it's important to understand that apart from God, we can do no good. It's in our hearts uh, all the time. You know, we were brought forth in iniquity. And so the heart is deceitful above all things. And a lot of people don't want to, to come to terms with that because they want to feel like they're good people. And, and that's fine. There's a lot of good in people, but people in general are not good. I'm not good. You're not good. We're not good in the context of we're all sinners in need of God's grace. And so this is what's so amazing about it is that when we actually come to terms with the gospel and we understand that it is God reconciling the world to himself through what he did on the cross through Jesus Christ, that we come to repentance by realizing, wow, I've been living apart from God. But what's even amazing about that, that we don't want to see past our, our, our own desire to live the way we want, is that the blessing that we will get inside is freedom. It's a joyous blessing. There's something so beautiful about it, friends, that I think we fail to miss it. You see, I used to think that, you know, getting drunk, getting high, doing drugs and doing all these different things made me feel good and therefore it was good. And so I used to hate on people that would think that I was wrong for doing what I was doing. And so when presented with this idea of, you know, I'm sure you can all relate with religion, we look at it and we're like, yeah, but then I have to quit doing all this stuff. And while that is true, you <laughs> Christians do not continue getting drunk. That's just what it is. They may have drinks from time to time, but we're not supposed to live in drunkenness. And there's something so much better that I've experienced in my life. When I read this, it's the joyous blessing, and I've experienced that in my life. And it's when I came to terms that I was living apart from God's will for my life, that was repentance for me. I didn't have to just single-handedly confess each single sin in my life, but I just came to terms with what I had done my whole life, how I'd been just living in sin and my life just kept going from brokenness to brokenness to brokenness. And I just kept going from bad to worse. Things just weren't working out. Things just weren't happening in my life. And it, and so when I surrendered my life to Christ, it, now it didn't happen overnight, but when I surrendered my life to Christ, the joyous blessing started to form in my life. And what was that joyous blessing? It was forgiveness. It was redemption reconciliation back to God who created me to be a certain way and he was now making me new. And this is the powerhouse of the gospel is that those who mourn and humble themselves under the mighty hand of God, they will be lifted up. And how do you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God? Well, it's very simple. If you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ came he died on the cross for your sins and for my sins, that his blood, much like the Old Testament sacrifice of atonement with animals, the blood appeased the wrath of God, much better the blood of Jesus Christ to those who believe that God sent his only son into the world, not to condemn the world, but to save the world through him, that those who believe that he went to the cross to die for their sins, and mine, of course, as well, when they believe that, and they believe that, Three days later, he rose from the dead. They believe that in their heart that God did that for them, and they simply just receive that in their lives, they will be saved. See, those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And this salvation is that we are redeemed and reconciled back to God so that he can recreate us, so to speak, to be new creations in him and to have peace with him and favor with him through what his son accomplished for us on the cross. It is so simple that I think we can miss it. God wants to take ashes of broken people's lives and turn it into a crown of glory, something beautiful, much like in the illustration I shared in the title screen right here. 
he will give a crown of beauty for ashes. Friends, I know in my life, I had lived from sin to sin, brokenness to brokenness, shame to shame, and I felt like there was never any hope. I was depressed. I was suicidal. I was losing my grip on reality. Now, that may not be you, and it may be you. And that's the point of this message is there's something for everyone. It doesn't matter what position you are at in your life. God is able to take yesterday, the brokenness of yesterday, and make it something entirely different today. Now, does that mean that my whole life is just going to work out and, and I'm going to have this success rate that I deem success? Well, no. Actually, it's so much more beautiful than that. You see, I had, at one point in time, there was a, a scripture and I read it and it said, for when we were slaves to sin, we were free in regard to righteousness. And this is sometimes what hinders people from coming to the gospel, from coming to God, is that they feel like they're more free without this than they are with this. But I'll tell you the truth from personal firsthand experience, I thought the same thing. But when I truly came into salvation and was reconciled back to God, was made a new creation, had forgiveness and peace in my life, it was something that I couldn't accomplish for myself. And I realized that it's something only faith in Jesus Christ and what he accomplished on the cross can do. It gave me a joy and a peace that was greater than anything I had acquired or had done beforehand in my sinful state. And don't get me wrong, when I say my brokenness and my sinful past, it wasn't all unsuccessful. I had moments where I had everything I wanted in life, where I, I meet the pinnacles of life. I had as many drugs as I wanted to do. I had relationships upon relationships, friendships. I had a high status in different areas of my life at different times. And then I had the low where I was sleeping under bridges and homeless. You know, I had been there. And so whether it was this version of success or unsuccess, it didn't matter. It was all brokenness. My past was like filthy rags until I came to Jesus and understand what the true meaning of life is all about. Jesus made a statement. He said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Again, back to that scripture I mentioned. For when you were enslaved to sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. See, I thought I was free. I thought I had it all together. I thought I had it figured out, but yet I was on this downward slope and didn't realize my fate was about to come to an end. Near-death experience after near-death experience, my life kept getting worse and worse and worse. I was empty. I was void of purpose and meaning in my life. And although I could have purpose and meaning for periods of time, ultimately, it would always fail. But there's one thing, that even though I was free in regard to righteousness, I was still enslaved to that which made me captive, which was my sin nature. Through Jesus Christ, he took my ashes of yesterday and brought it into something of beauty today. And now I may not have the highest status, but my life isn't about that anymore. It is about serving the Lord Jesus Christ. And now I share my life with you, not because I want to say, oh, look at how far I've come or look at how good I am, because I'm not. I am nothing without God. The only reason why I share my story is because maybe there's somebody like me out there that needs to hear it and needs to experience what I've experienced and understand what true salvation is and what true freedom is. Friends, that is my heart's appeal to you, is that you wouldn't receive the grace of God in vain, but you would receive it with a true heart and understand what God did through his son, Jesus Christ. You know, there are many religions out there offering many different things, but there's one thing I came to realize is that through Jesus Christ alone comes power to live a godly life. All other religions don't have power to live a godly life. They expect you to keep up with this and keep up with this and keep up with this. And while that's true, when we get saved, we need to no longer live in sin. We're still going to fall. We're still going to fail. But Jesus Christ and his grace is so strong and powerful, he can pick us back up. He alone supernaturally can cleanse us from the inside out. See, that's the beauty of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. He doesn't come to us and say, okay, I want you to do this outward thing and this outward thing. He says, I want to come into your life and change it from the inside out, from glory to glory, day by day. But today it starts because today is the day of salvation. None of us are promised tomorrow. Our life is a gift from God. The very breath we have is a gift from God and we have to use it wisely. 
and understand that our time here on earth is short. But if we want to truly experience eternity with God and the resurrection of the saints, where we're given a new body and a new home, where we have no more pain, no more suffering, we can understand that it is through Jesus alone and what he alone accomplished. It is by grace through faith. And if you believe that God sent his son to be the savior of the world and that that son, Jesus Christ, about 2,000 years ago, went to the cross, paid the penalty, shed his blood, sacrificed himself through love for you and for me, and you believe that he was put in the tomb, but three days later, he rose from the dead with all power in his hand to prove that death no longer has dominion over humanity who trusts their life to him. Friends, that's what it's all about. That's what being made from ashes to beauty is all about. And to show further context, I, I just want to share in Luke 4, where, where Jesus, he shared the passage of scripture that I'm reading, that I read from Isaiah 61, 3, but he started at verse 1 and went to verse 2. And the context of the scripture, again, is from Isaiah 61, and I'm going to be reading from Luke 4. And here it is is so he being jesus he came to nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the sabbath day and stood up to read and he was handed the book of the prophet isaiah and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives in recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus then closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him, and he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. I want to stop there. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing, as just as it was 2,000 years ago, not because I spoke it, but because the word of God says it. And that is something that is amazing. It is for everyone. It doesn't matter what walk of life you're from, what religious background you're from. Jesus is the savior of all humanity. And I share the brokenness of my life and the things I had been through, just innumerable to, to really explain drug overdoses, suicide attempts, depression, just, just things in my life just kept unraveling and unraveling. And again, I mentioned as I had pinnacles in my life where I had everything that I wanted or so I thought, and I had moments where I was at the lowest of my low. And it's at the lowest of my low where Jesus finally called out to me and said, I've got a plan for you, plans for peace and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Sitting in a prison cell already there for two years, not really a cell, it was an open bay dorm at this point, but sitting in a prison for, I did five years and two months on a six-year sentence, been locked up numerous times, probably close to more closer to eight to 10 years of my life in different county jails and in prison. Um, so while I was in there, I heard that message that God had a plan for me. And I thought, I'm the most hopeless person there is. Three-time felon, you know, just just horrible things. And so I thought, well, you know, how, how, could, how could this be for me? How could this be fulfilled in my hearing? And I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior that day and invited him to bide with me and to become my salvation. And that day he made me new friends. And from that day forward, I began to grow and learn like the peeling back of the layers of onions. It just kept going and going. And so over and over and over again, I would just apply the word of God to my life, keep praying and just be faithful in those things that I knew to be faithful in as I learned them. It was a growing process. It's a lifelong process. Don't stop, don't get discouraged. Today is the day of salvation. Today, this word is fulfilled in your hearing, and God has a plan for your life, just as he had one for me, and is still fulfilling it today. 
I got saved back in 2011. It's about to be 2023, and I'm just so grateful as I look back. I, I've still gone through heartaches, and but yet I can sense and see the activity of God in my life and what he's done in my life. And again, I am not sharing that to point fingers at me. It is not about me. It is about you, friends. It is about God, friends. It is about what he alone can do. He can take the ashes of our brokenness, our past mistakes, the failures of our life. We bring them to him and we mourn before him. If we humble ourselves and recognize the gravity of those things before him, he promises if we call out to him, he will save us. And it doesn't mean that he'll just erase everything we've gone through, but he'll give you a new start, a fresh start. Today is the day of salvation. Well, I thank you so much for tuning in for this segment of Real Gospel for Real People. And if you've been following along in my YouTube channel, thank you. Um, I always just, you know, I don't like to, to, to mention like and subscribe, but sometimes I do because it's important for you um, to, to get notifications if you are enjoying this material, if you are learning, if you are growing from it, then I encourage you to hit the subscribe so you can be notified of these things. And also hitting the like button, it's not for me to see how many people like what, the, what these videos are doing, but it's more about the way the YouTube algorithm works. The more likes there are, the more it puts the video out in front of other people. And so there are a lot of people that may have pasts like mine that need to hear this message. That is my hope. It's not about me. It's about the gospel. It's about spreading awareness of what God alone can do. And so I'm so thank, thankful for each and every one of you for tuning in. I do hope that you did get something from this. I would like to say and offer a prayer for you before I go and before I close this out. So let's go ahead and go. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for the opportunity to, to share what you alone have done, Lord. It is not about me. It's, it's all about you. It's about what you're doing, reaching into humanity to bring change into people's lives, Lord. And that is all I want to highlight, Lord. And, and we do that by sharing our story, to be open and honest. And I just praise you for that, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that if there's anybody out there that needs to hear this, that you would just take this message and sow it like a seed in their heart, Lord God, and that you would bring a harvest of fruit out of that seed, that you would bless someone's life, Lord, that you would turn their mourning into a joyous blessing, refreshment, renewal by your presence alone, Lord, bringing peace and joy and love into the hearts of many. I pray, Lord, that you would bring transformation into people's lives, Lord, that you would take the brokenness of their past mistakes, Lord, and turn it into something of beauty today. That is all we can ask and hope for, Lord, because it is you alone who are God and we are not. And so we do entrust this message to you. We entrust our lives to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you all. We love you.